Hey friends. I guess um, I usually start videos. It's so it's the funniest thing, y'all. I think I did my first Facebook Live like six years ago, which is crazy because I remember having a panic attack and now I just don't even pay attention. I swear, I swear to you, recently I was like scratching my nose and the live was starting and I was like finger was halfway up my nose and I was like, you know, people are gonna think that you're a pretty nasty person, Mary Catherine, if you don't get your manners right. <laughs> Anyways, um, I want to talk to y'all uh, about a topic that, while is extremely controversial and shouldn't be, um, it's also very dear to my heart. And I'm going to tell y'all why. For so many reasons. Um, but the reason I wanted to do a live video about it is because every time I try to talk about this, the Facebook gods are like, nope. You cannot. Those are words that are against the rules. And so I guess we're going to have to speak in code in order to get anything accomplished. <laughs> Because um, I know the devil has strong and negative opinions about Romaine. <laughs> you are so funny, girl. I love you. You're so great. Um, but today, I posted an article um, in which definitely didn't come. I don't know how to say. You know what's funny, y'all? I, I was going to use the word come out of the closet as a... Uh, like somebody who is okay and supportive and has even used marijuana. But I don't think I can say come out of the closet, especially during June, because like that has a whole different meaning now in a good way. So what would I say? I'm outing myself saying, oh my gosh, I just don't know any other term. All right, well, here it is. Um, I have tried the devil's lettuce and it did not send me to hell. And this is a lifelong journey, I would say, um, because I started getting information about weed when I was a kid. And not from my parents, because they, you know, who tells their kid, hey kids, let's talk about weed. Um, but culturally, I got a lot of cues that, sorry guys, uh, I need to grab my internet. Can y'all give me one second and don't go away? I'm gonna go fix it, hold on. And we're back, okay. Uh, can anybody give me a time stamp on this video and tell me where we are? Not what time it is on the clock, but the time stamp so that I can uh, push through for all the other folks who are going to be joining later to let them know when I start talking about the topic. So if you don't mind, if somebody could give me a timestamp, I'm going to start talking about uh, the Christianity and cannabis conversation. Churchgoers and weed. The devil's lettuce. Are we getting high on Jesus? Or are we getting high on THC? We're going to have the conversation today. And there's a reason for it, okay? Uh, one, I, I wrote about this, and thank you, Jamie and Sylvia, y'all are the best. And Sasha, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. First, what I would like to do is show y'all that today I wrote an article in which I said, for God so loved the stoner. Um, and I shared the story of um, my over my deconstructing of the church's opinion on marijuana and um, why I got to that place and basically how. And I'm sharing that link with y'all now so y'all can go back and check it. Or you can just scroll down on Facebook after this video. Um, but what I noticed is I thought, wow, this is probably going to kick a big anthill. I've been doing this internet business for a really long time and coming out as a Christian author who is supportive of marijuana. Anytime that I come out with a position that is juxtaposed to what the church says, um, it causes a stir. But the weirdest thing happened today. I posted an article about loving, like, apologizing on behalf of the church uh, as a Christian mom who seriously misjudged weed. And it was like crickets. It was the weirdest thing. And then I realized, oh my gosh, this is a conversation that the internet does not let us have because these words are flagged in the algorithm as being a problem. And how funny is that? Because they've been flagged my whole life as being a problem. And I'm like, guys, we've just got to start having honest conversations about this because nobody has. So let me start by saying that growing up as a child in the 90s, um, this was like the peak of the war on drugs. And so I came into the world understanding that people who did weed were bad guys, right? But then that was kind of juxtaposed to what the media was pushing out, which was two different versions of stoners. I'm going to speak plainly. Um, there were two ideas that I had of people who used weed, and neither one of them were very flattering. But one was white guys who were like eating cheese whiz and like being silly and funny. And then like black men who basically didn't leave their house and just got stoned all day. And these are all movies. If I say this, you probably recognize them in multiple movies because those were the race stereotype tropes that were pushed on us. 
intentionally or not, I have to say, I think it was, it sure did look like if you were a white person that did weed, it was funny. And if you're a black man that did weed, you ended up in prison for the rest of your life. And this is not even an exaggeration. The war on drugs, it, it hit its peak when the three strike law was passed, which said anybody that's had a felony or a violent crime, felony or three times is, could potentially be sent to prison for the rest of their life. And this happened a lot. I didn't write about it in the article because it was not a part of my initial journey to deconstructing weed. But I'm going to start writing about it a lot because what I learned is where I thought that this was, uh, I wondered if maybe it was gray area, but it's pretty freaking black and white. And by black and white, I mean it was handled differently for white people than it was for black people. So as somebody who is deconstructing both, you know, my Christian upbringing and also looking with a critical lens at my cultural upbringing, I had to ask myself some hard questions as to why I felt this way about weed. And when I started asking those questions, every answer led me to a different, to a different landing point. And it started when my uncle, who I wrote about in this article, I'd love for y'all to share it because I'm telling you that Facebook is suppressing it and I'm really sad about it. Like, this matters to me. My dear Uncle Mikey, um, who I gave my kidney to, suffered, like, awful pain. And he lived in Florida. And the year he died, medical marijuana was passed in Florida. And he was able to get access to it. And when I tell you that the last few months of his life, I was able to have phone calls with him and he was able to eat meals and, um, you know, I, he did not have that benefit from other medicines. In fact, uh, like myself, uh, he had a tendency to, you know, abuse prescription meds, which is very, very common. And so when you're, I mean, I say abuse, when somebody's in incredible pain and also cannot remember when they took their last meds, abuse is kind of one of those things that can happen on accident when you're abusing a med. It's like, oh, did I take that? Oh, I'm still hurting. Probably not. So I remember this struggle for my Aunt Cindy, who had to struggle to keep him medicated, but not, you know, overdosing. And that was a hard line. And so when he had med access to medical marijuana, that was no longer a struggle. We did not have to worry about it. He might get silly and fall asleep, but as somebody who was chronically ill, terminally ill, and terminally ill and dying, it was a miracle, a blessing, a miracle even. I will say it, it is a miracle. Um, the second time, I was diagnosed with cancer at the same time as a dear friend who is no longer, but say he's a dear friend. He was more like a granddad. It was my... Um, one of my dear friend's fathers, and we spent, I probably spent six days a week at their house, you know, every day, just heading over there. We dropped each other's kids off, and uh, I loved this man. He was the happiest Chinese man who always was pushing his grandbabies around in a stroller outside. He was active. I mean, when I lived in Fort Myers, if I went to the grocery store, I would see him pushing his little granddaughter at Publix, and then on the way home, he'd be like on another side of the sidewalk. Man covered miles every day with his grandbaby, and then he got mesothelioma and started drastically declining. And same thing, except for he, as an immigrant, was scared of trying to get a medical marijuana card because of misinformation and stigma, and he thought it would result in him dying in another country. So one that he did not know anymore and that he had no connections to. So we went and found weed for him, and I'll frankly tell you it was not regulated. And I, we gave it to him, and it was the first time I saw in the six months of his suffering, he ate a meal, he didn't feel pain, and he was himself again. Was he an altered self? Yes, it's a medicine. It alters you. Um, and I don't, you know, am I, do I, am I arguing for people to get, like, stoned out of their minds? No. But I'm also, like, not arguing against it. I'm not in that argument. I'm not in the argument of moralizing substances because Jesus and the Bible didn't do that. And we've already done the journey from teetotaler Christianity against alcohol to beer drinking Christians being cool. Why did we leave weed behind in that conversation when everybody knows and that science is clear 
that marijuana is less dangerous than alcohol, that it has less negative impacts on the body than alcohol, and yet the stigma remains. Why? It's cultural, it's racist, and it's wrong. And y'all, the final step in my journey of deconstructing the stigma around marijuana was when I was diagnosed with cancer. And at this point, I had tried it when it, where it was legal. I had traveled to Oregon on a work trip. I was kind of deconstructing my faith. Um, and some girls were like, come on, MK, not a big deal. And I was like, oh, it's not against the rules. I'll try it. And I was like, well, I, I certainly assumed I would die based on what I had been told about it. And Susan said it best. Weed, I mean, somebody said weed, we were, I was told that weed is an, a gateway drug. Let me tell you something. Weed is an exit drug. People who are addicted to more dangerous substances find peace and comfort in marijuana. I will not lie and say that it is a 100% uh, non-malignant, like no negative side effects thing because everything we put in our body has both good and bad impact, which is why we need to be aware of those things. But... On the wrong side of that is lying about the dangers of something. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, why? Why? Let I got diagnosed with cancer in, I think, 2016, maybe. Uh, and after that, I had a you know, mastectomy. But it was during that diagnosis that my life turned upside down. And I will be frank with you, I was not okay. And when I say I was not okay... I want to issue a trigger warning. Um, I had suicidal ideations. Not that I wanted to die. I did not. That was my fear, was dying. But I wanted to be in control of it. And um, I couldn't be. And I spent six months in the shower and in bed, going back and forth, crying, yelling at my kids, feeling like my life was over and not knowing how to handle it. Finally, I went to Moffitt in Tampa and told her, and I told the physicians there that I was not going to make it to a mastectomy if I did not figure out how to handle my anxiety. And, the, and I said, however, I need to be very clear about something. Addiction runs in my family. My, I have got multiple family members who have been in rehab multiple times. And these are family members I do life with that I love dearly. I have, I have family that's addicted to alcohol. I have family that was addicted to um, opioids, to heroin. And it all came from the same place of not being able to moderate. I had an addictive personality. I told her that. And she said, as severe as your situation is, I recommend one of two things. Xanax or weed? I took Xanax. Would you like to guess how that went for me? I was addicted within two weeks and I had to go cold turkey off of the med at 30 days because I was running out of it and I knew that it was a three month prescription. And the addicting effect of that med just about killed me. And yet, I could tell people at church that I had been prescribed Xanax. They might kind of look, but they would not judge. They would question, but they would not condemn. But if I had come to church and said, I've decided to try medical marijuana for my anxiety because of cancer, that conversation would not have gone well. It is so past time to put this stone age perspective behind us. Not only is marijuana safe, it is medicine. It should be treated like medicine. Tylenol is safe. It is also medicine. If I go take a whole bottle of it, it's no longer safe. So don't like get it twisted, but it is. It is a medicine and it is a miraculous medicine that does powerful things for a lot of people. It truly saves lives. There are studies coming out of um, veterans of war who 
no longer have suicidal ideation and are able to live their lives because of medical marijuana. No other drug has done that in the same way that THC has. And so I avoided this topic because <laughs> Caroline's like the stone age. I know, right? Just to put it bluntly. I mean, I cannot tell you how much fun I have with these puns, but I won't do it. I will not. I edited at least 25 puns out of that article just so nobody would get annoyed with me because I had too much fun with it. But this is the last thing I'm gonna say. One, we need to have this, this conversation needs to be had and Christians need to be in it. Um, there is no other option but for us to get involved in the mess that we helped create. So if you're a Christian and you've looked down on weed and you've stigmatized it and you've judged people for doing it, I don't care if you don't partake. It's important for you to correct the narrative. We have to do this. Look at the other options. They're killing people. And my husband's a physician. He will tell you the same thing because I talked to Ian on multiple, let me tell you something. Because I'm a progressive faith person, I get reached out to by a lot of companies that are trying to reach Christians but have not been able to get through the wall of indoctrination. And three years ago, a company reached out to me and said, we'd like to partner with you. We do mostly CBD products, but some of our stuff has THC in it. And even then, when I had seen weed save lives, I was afraid to do it. Even then when I believed in it and the money was good, I turned it down because I was worried that it was somehow solely my ministry and the fact that I love Jesus, that people would see that and they would see my conversations about cannabis and say, oh, this girl's done. And you know what's crazy about it today? I, I, let me just talk about the things that I've published recently, okay? Just so y'all get an idea of how stigmatized this is and how ridiculous, okay? I have, in the last month, written about spanking, uh, homosexuality, racism in the church. Um, gosh, those are three big ones, right? Politics, leaving the GOP, all of that's on my Substack. Can I just tell y'all that the first time I've ever gotten an unsubscription was within 30 seconds of me publishing an article that said, for God so loved the stoner. All right, I get it, it pissed you off. But like, to be fair, the art, that scripture is literally for God so loved the world. That umbrella includes stoners. I don't know why that's so offensive. And also, I was pushing the envelope, calling people stoner, like hippie. Oh, like people that indulge. Not everybody that uses THC is a stoner, and it's okay to be one. Not judging. But I am saying, like, it's so ridiculous to give people a name for using a medicine that's been around for forever. And so... This is where I tell y'all that I've tried it and that I use it and that it is fine. And that as a Christian who loves Jesus and also loves science, I am putting my voice out there from now on in this conversation of advocacy of flipping the narrative against weed because it's hurting people. And I care about people. Um, I will say that I microdose. And I try not to, and, and people say it's a gateway drug. Interestingly enough, since I started microdosing, I've not touched alcohol. It's been months. I have no desire. None. My patience is better. My anxiety is better. I take less meds. Meds are important, but this is one, and it's helping. And so I'm in Alabama, and so it's not regulated or legal here. And so I have to microdose which means I'm getting the federally legal amount, which is very, very small. Um, I did not want to include what I use. Oh, it's really funny because they're actually in the background, my products that I use. Um, <laughs> but um, I wanted to share those with y'all, but I don't want to do it in this video because that's not what this video is about. But I'll invite you at tonight at 7 p.m. If you'd like to tune in and see what I use, I will share it with you. And I've decided to partner with that company uh, because for the last couple of months, I decided that I wanted to write this and I had anxiety about it forever and ever. And I was medicating that anxiety by microdosing THC. And do you know how ridiculous that is? 
that I was scared to tell people what was working for me? Me. I'm not scared of talking about stuff, but I was. And that was the last, I think one, who knows, I'm probably going to be on a journey like this for the rest of my life where things that I thought were firm, secure ideas that made perfect sense to me start falling apart and I have to question them. Maybe that's what it is to grow up. But it's, it's one of the last frontiers where I feel like the church has truly caused harm. It's not the last place they'll do it, but it's a place we're actively doing it and it needs to stop. So I'm going to invite y'all to this conversation and I ask y'all to help me whenever I'm talking about it. And this is why I don't usually ask people to share my content just because. But if you see me writing about this, especially the article that I just posted, it's, you can just literally scroll down from this video after you get off. It's right there. But Facebook is penalizing any conversation about around weed, THC. There's no words that I can use that aren't going to get penalized. The only way to skirt that algorithm is to get y'all's help. And so I'm asking you, since I'm joining this conversation, to help promote it. Um, just share it. I don't get money from y'all sharing it. I do get money if y'all buy my products, but that's why I'm keeping these videos separate. This one is a conversation. Tonight at 7, 7 p.m. Central, I will do this video. I'm going to talk to y'all about what I've used and for how long I've used it and what it does. And I would love to bring y'all into that conversation. Um, it's interesting. Like, here's the thing. Uh, we got a sweet commenter who's not being rude, but says, I don't agree with it. That's just my opinion. What's there not to agree with? It's like not agreeing with Tylenol. This is exactly what I'm trying to drive home. And I ask you to really consider it, please. That science says it's safe. It should be regulated because when things are regulated, they're safer, which is why I don't go take like just fake Tylenol that nobody's regulating. You should always take regulated things when you're eating them in your body, but, but it's safe and it's proven to be safe and safer than the majority of the meds that you're already taking. And so what is there to disagree with? Do you disagree with the existing under? I think it's really interesting, and this is where I'm going to end this, okay? Um, I, there is nothing to disagree with. It's not a sin. And I know this because a substance cannot be sinful. It is neutral in the hands of a user. I will take this further and say a gun is neutral until it is used. But I am I'm for regulation. Things should be regulated so that they're not used incorrectly. And when we all agree on that, I don't understand where the confusion comes in about weed. I just, I really don't. I feel like at this point, it is one of two things. It's disingenuous conversations or it's uninformed because when you really, and I, I can't believe it's any other thing at this point, because when you get to the point where you get the information, there is nothing to disagree with. Now, I know that the church has taught people to say that something is sinful. I get told all the time on this page that um, my gay friends are, sin, are sinners for being gay. Um, and... I want to focus on the definition of sin, and then we're going to end this video, and I hope to see a lot of y'all tonight at 7 p.m., and please, please, please go share that article. I really poured my heart into it, and I've been scared about it for a long time, so it kind of makes me sad that uh, it's getting suppressed in the algorithm. I get it, though, but if y'all could help elevate that, it would mean a lot to me. Um, but I called my friend Nathan, and this is in the article, and I asked him, what does it mean? What does sin even mean? Like, I guess that's a good starting place. Well, I'm trying to sort through what's bad and what's not. He's like, well, that's the interesting thing, Mary Catherine. It's not what's bad and what's not. That's literally not what sin means. Sin comes from an archery term. That means to miss the mark, meaning God has a mark for us, a plan, a set, a path. And when we miss it, We've missed the mark. Holy crap. What a beautiful way of saying you didn't get that one quite right. But just keep going. We don't treat it that way. We treat it like salvation or condemnation. As if a choice on this planet has the ability to overturn the love of an eternal creator. Give me a break. 
And yes, um, Katra, I would agree with you that it's the overindulgence that is sinful. I don't, I don't think that, and when I say sinful, understand what I mean is that's missing the mark. It's not like you're going to hell. As in, I went to have some drinks and like this explains so much because there's alcohol in the Bible. I mean, like Jesus turned the water into wine. It was a celebration. People were celebrating. Sometimes we get home from celebrating and we go, hmm, I missed the mark a little bit. I don't feel super great. Is God condemning us? No, I mean, to miss the mark is to not hit the bullseye. And that's it. And uh, when it says we all sin and fall short, yeah, we do. And it's not a list of things we do. It's how we live. It's how we live missing the mark. I'm going to tell y'all something, church, Christians, anybody listening at this point, we have really missed the mark when it comes to weed. We have sinned in that sense by causing harm to other people and by spreading misinformation. So, boy. I'm a little anxious to get off this video and see if I have lost my entire following, but I have to tell you, I stand by every word I said. I'm not, there's not going to be an apology issued for this one. I don't ever apologize for my true beliefs, but um, I sometimes try to cushion them. I'm not doing that today because this is just straight facts. It is way past time. For Christians to stop stigmatizing the use of a medicine that saves lives. Stop it. Do not be a part of it. Do not stigmatize. Do not shame. Do not judge. Do not jump into that conversation to hurt people. If your friend had a headache and you and you saw them grabbing some Tylenol, would you tell them, ooh, that's sinful. God really wants you to suffer. No. Because that, that would be missing the mark. Can we stop doing that, please? That's it. At 7 p.m., I will be doing a video. I would really love it if you told your friends, hey, guys, that crazy Christian blogger that I follow, she's going to be talking about weed tonight. Um, we should support her even if we don't buy the products. So I'd appreciate some friendly faces there because as strong as I believe in this, it's still a scary journey. It's scary like taking the training wheels off your bike. I'm having a conversation that not a lot of people in church are having, and I feel alone. So I'm asking you to help me do this, to help me not feel so alone um, in my, what I believe is right. Um, if you agree with me, please stick around. If you don't, please have grace because I admit that in my life, there's going to be a lot of times where I miss the mark. Um, and I'm aware of that potential, um, acutely aware. I just don't believe this is that time. So uh, there's an article posted, and I'll be here at 7, and I will love to see y'all then. I will put in the, my stories uh, that the video is at 7 so that y'all can come and see my products, and we will have a, a separate conversation just about the effects and how um, it, it helps me, what, how it makes me feel. Um, and you will see that I am not a pothead or a stoner, um, though if you are one, I love you, and I really just would love to hear you laugh. And um, if y'all were wondering how I could be friends with somebody like my bestie, Sarah Farrell Baker, who on Thursday has gummy Thursdays, it's because I think she's hilarious, and I would love to be there with her. Hard stop. No judgment. My friend Sarah's amazing, and I don't make excuses for why I love her. I love her because she's cool as heck, and the things she, do, she does are fun. And... Uh, I just don't see anything wrong with my buddy giggling on the couch on a Thursday. It just doesn't seem like the kind of thing that Jesus would get bristled up over. But, um, I, again, I certainly could miss the mark, but um, at least I'm aware of that possibility. Some of us seem to not be. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions before I hop off this video? I would love to answer any questions that y'all might have. Um and anybody that's here, if you use THC and you felt judged by the church before, I would like to extend my personal apology on behalf of Christians that have hurt you. I definitely stigmatized weed and I was a part of the problem and I'm sorry. And you deserve that apology from the entire church, but you're not going to get it. So please accept mine. Um, 
And yeah, like, you know, I love this question. This is such a great question. Um, didn't God create all plants? Yes, of course. Um, and then some plants are dangerous to eat and some are not. And that's why we're supposed to use wisdom and discernment. And I feel like that looks like taking an entire picture, uh, getting all of the facts, and then saying, this is the whole picture and this is how I feel. Um, but taking a piece of Swiss cheese that was made by somebody that doesn't know anything about, and like that's, whole, that's, that's the picture. That is the picture the church handed me with Swiss cheese. I, I don't even know where the holes were. I don't know where, how they got there, but that's what I had. And so it was on me to be like, okay, do I fill in the holes or I throw this thing over and start all over? And I don't know what I did. It feels like a little bit of both, but um, this is me telling y'all my truth and that um, I think that you can be high on Jesus and THC and uh, it's totally fine. It, it's, it's fine. And for anybody that's like, wait a minute, she said hi. What do you think a Loratab does? Honestly, wait, literally the same thing, except one is safer. So uh, I'm here with any, oh yeah, I, I get it. The smell stinks. Oh yeah, weed stinks. I, I don't know what it does. It's literally the worst. And I love going to New York City and when they legalized weed, I was like, yay, I can access it. And also it stinks. That is true. I don't know what there is to do about it. Um, you know, I just don't know, to be honest with you. New shirt. I love Jesus, but I smoke a little. <laughs> no, I'm not, I just can't do that. Oh, Lord. Listen, y'all are pushing me out of my comfort zone. I ain't there yet. We can't ban alcohol at this point, Sandra. I, I've gotten to the point where I believe that people are going to access things that they want. And alcohol has been around for millennia and humans rely on it. Like when some of them rely on it in ways they shouldn't, but we do. And so I don't think we can ban things. I just don't think that's the solution. I think regulating them is a really, really, really good solution. And I think that looks like making sure that the products are safe and that people aren't getting access to too much of them. You know, um, we don't do that with alcohol though. I mean, I will say that like that, that industry is completely unregulated. It seems I, they, they do make sure that certain amounts of it can't be in cans, but like, my gosh, how many drunk drivers are killing people and that we still teach kids to drink. Come on church. Oh, the shirt is high on Jesus and THC. I will make it, but I know y'all aren't going to buy it. I think y'all are full of it. I'll totally make it, but y'all will not buy it. <laughs> you know what? Here's the deal I will make with y'all. Tonight, when I do my seven o'clock video about the products that I take, if I get a good response and people are actually going to buy some of that, like you're like, hmm, yeah, I like tea. I want some of this. I'll make a t-shirt. That's my deal. If I do this video and some of y'all are like, okay, fine, MK, we also do, we, we use this stuff. I'm not making something unless I know for a fact that I've got some of y'all over here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm going to test it at 7 p.m. And if y'all show up and show out, I'll make the dang shirt. And heck, I'll wear it. I'll wear it. All right. I love y'all. And you are right, Sandra. I'm going to end here. I grew up, oh, I see, where alcohol ruined many people's lives, but we didn't. I don't. I am sure that weed has ruined lives, but the people that I know that overindulge in weed and the people that I know that overindulge in alcohol, I'm going to tell you what the difference is. The difference is the people who overindulge in alcohol hurt a lot of other people. The people who overindulge in weed uh, order Uber Eats at three in the morning. That's about it. I'm, I'm very serious about this, guys. I could not be more serious that the difference is so hypocritical that it really just, it's, it's, we got to do better. All right. I've ranted for a long time. Y'all go share that article and I'll see you at seven at 7 PM. We're going to all be here to talk about the products that I use. And I'm going to go put a reminder up in the stories. So I hope to see y'all there. You're exactly right. Clarissa. The Bible says everything in moderation. Hey, Jen. She says, can you please say hi? Hi. You can go and screen record this. Jen, you're amazing. And you deserve to have a really good day. So be kind to yourself. And you know what? Go eat some cheese dip. You deserve it. So go and like grab that and then just keep it forever and know that I love you. Okay. All right. Y'all have a good day.